All right, hi guys. This is the Overtime Podcast. This is a this is a sports podcast. We're a little bit more NFL centric, but we're not gonna not dive into other sports and sports entertainment. So you're gonna hear there's a WWE segment because we love wrestling. Um, we got this is a husband wife podcast. My husband is the expert at sports, and I'm the idiot. So <laughs> he's an idiot, but not with sports. I am an idiot. <laughs> and I'm going to add to that if you're done. Yes, I'm done. You're good. Um, I stream this live on Twitch. It'll be every Wednesday around 6 o'clock. This is our first go around, so there's going to be some changes of, along the way. So give us a break for the first segment here. Um, it will be uploaded on YouTube. However, we are going to record this on a Wednesday post it on a friday so yes things might be a little late um we did it that way because of thursday night football being the beginning of the week so we're gonna do it on a wednesday and i'll predict probably most of the games throughout the week um but again thursday start so we figured wednesday would be the best time to record it um so if you want to witness it live twitch if you want to watch the YouTube, totally fine. Uh, and we are going to be uploading to Spotify. So welcome viewers, welcome listeners. And I can't wait to start doing this. I have people that are ready to come in. Um, but I told them, I said, let me get a few shows under our belt just to get situated and ready. But I should be able to bring in a couple extra people. Uh, we already lost one today, but that's totally fine. It happens. I don't and, think he uh, was expecting to do it today, so. Yeah, it was kind of last, not really last minute. But um, Alex does have some segments for me to do next week, which obviously we're we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. But it's going. she's going to do stuff where I'm not, I don't know the questions. This week, I know everything is going to happen, so we can sort it out, figure it out. And again, things might change, but help us along the way, because we're going to be here. All right. Okay. That's it. So I guess before we dive into it, I'm going to sort of explain what's going on, what we're going to do every week. Um, first thing we're going to start off with is I go through, I'm going to start going through e probably about every day, I'd say. I'm going to find about five to seven news articles from all sports. It doesn't have to be NFL. If it's something that's big in NFL, I'm going to add it. But like this week, I've got a few NFL. I have a soccer. I've got some uh, college football articles. It's anything that pops out that I'm like, that sounds like something we could talk about. Um, Chris has put some some suggestions in to talk about. I'm going to go through the injury list before the day before the podcast, the NFL injury list. Uh, I picked out names that were that I, at least I knew who they were because Chris has talked about them. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like some something we should talk about. You know, picked out a few of those. Um, we're going to do a WWE segment every week called uh, Before the Bell Rings. Uh, we're, we usually would have an, an, an expert with us but he couldn't do it today, which is fine. We, Me and Chris are still pretty well-rounded with WWE, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, and then other weeks, like Chris said, there's going to be some different things other weeks that we do, and that's something that I'll explain before we do them. So, uh, you ready? Yeah, I've been ready. Okay. So we're going to start with the news articles I found. Uh, first thing I found that uh, we don't really have to talk about it. I was just sort of shocked by it, I guess. C.D. Lamb formally signs deal, practices with Cowboys. I didn't even know he wasn't formally on the team. Uh, so he was. Um, they were just trying to get a contract extension going. Oh. Um, I do have a few things to say about that one. Okay. Um, probably not too much. Uh, but the real issue with that was Jerry Jones, in my opinion, he says, Oh, I'm not rushing it. Okay. That's your star wide receiver. I understand not rushing it, but to speak publicly saying that, like, come on. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, Jerry Jones knows what he's doing. He's got all the money in the world. Somehow. I shouldn't say he knows what he's doing. Cause he really doesn't. But the fact that you're going to say that publicly, just come on, dude. 
Just... Yeah, 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 yeah. He did sign, well, I think it was $146 million, I believe. Oh, late. where are the Cowboys getting their money from? They don't win Super Bowls. <laughs> you, uh, you should double check me on that. I think it was $146 million. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I it have, might have been 130 I have the link. Let me see if the link should should say, I'd imagine. Um, the deal includes a $38 million signing bonus. $100 million guaranteed. It says the $34 million annual average places him second among receivers behind Justin Jefferson. Huh. And I know Justin just got a pretty good contract. How are so. these small teams that don't go to Super Bowls getting all this money? I mean, that's literally the, <laughs> the cap, though. I mean, they don't make it to the Super Bowl. They... They don't have players, so they have a cap that they can go off of. Oh, well, okay. Well. If that makes sense. $136 million extension. That's what I thought. Is that okay? I said 146 Okay. I have, I have one number mixed up. Okay, still, though. Good Lord. <clears throat> That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Okay, and then this was another one. I think you mentioned it to me yesterday. I'm not 100% sure, but it stood out to me as well because I knew the name. Uh, Dolphins Odell Beckham Jr. to start season on Pup List. Yeah, <laughs> listen, dude. I just, I just, th I know who Odell Beckham Jr. is. So, like, I was like, whoa. He needs to retire. <laughs> I'm going to say it. that's going to, that's going to affect a lot of people. A lot of people like Odell Beckham. Listen. I've said this for years. I'm going to keep saying it. Odell Beckham. I know. I know uh, you're going to sit there and say, well, you ain't played in the NFL. You have no. no." He's an average receiver. He's average. He's not a great wide receiver. He made one fucking great play. Excuse my language. He made <laughs> one great play. Okay. Everyone has that great. He, he was a standout in college. He was a standout. I'm pretty sure in high school. but. When he came to the NFL, he's an average wide receiver, in my opinion. And I've said it, I don't know how many times. And it's just proving my point more and more. He's injury prone now. He's obviously on the pup list already. That means, I mean, I know he tore his ACL last year on turf, which we should get into that some other time. Get rid of turf fields. It does ruin careers. We do want to see stars out there. But the fact that... I mean, I'm I'm not surprised he went to the Dolphins, but I just I I don't know. I wouldn't sign him. I I wouldn't sign him at all. I I get a new rookie wide receiver, and the only reason I say that is because these quarterbacks nowadays they're starting to get a little bit better. They can read a little bit better. I mean, we've had that span where we had you know great like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. All those were great. Uh, their rookie seasons kind of sucked, but they stood out later on. They could read the offense, read the defense. It's just, I don't know. We we had that section where the quarterbacks wasn't doing so good, and then now we got we get Joe Burrow, uh, Josh Allen, where they can read the defense, and it's like we just need to get good rookie wide receivers and pretty well train them how to catch the ball correctly. I mean, you get a good wide receiver coach and a good quarterback coach. You get your timing down, and you got a no doubt Beckham Jr. So I'm saying we got uh, for 49ers. If before we even get too far in this podcast, we are huge 49er fans. At least I am. Um, so like we got a Chris Conley, like the kid's fucking amazing. And then we got uh, Ricky Purcell. That's all I'm saying. Ricky Purcell. He could be the next Odell Beckham Jr. He could be another average wide receiver. Or he could be another Justin Jefferson where he's a star. Just saying. A wide receiver's there to catch the ball. Odell Beckham, he can do that if he can stay on the field. So for him signing with the Dolphins, I'm glad he's got a job. Right. But I wouldn't be signing him. Yeah, right. He's I... average. Oh, man, so. that's why the Dolphins have him and not. <laughs> well, and that's, that's the problem, though. If he does stay healthy, I mean, that's another threat on the field. I'm not saying he's like 
I'd say he's above average. Okay. I shouldn't say he's average. I will say he's above average because he can make some spectacular plays. But he's got to be on the field. But he's got to be on the field. Like he's injury prone. It's just okay when you start when you start having injuries every year. It gets to the point now. It's like okay, is it even worth keeping you? Like, I mean, that's kind of what happened to uh, Julius Jones. That dude, uh, he was a na- spectacular wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. He gets injured, and, you know, when you're a, a running back or a wide receiver and you injure your leg, preferably your ankle, you're screwed, dude. That's one of the hardest things to come by. Derrick Henry, he had a great comeback year, but he, was, he wasn't he was 100 in my opinion. Last year he did phenomenal, in my opinion, but it wasn't really his comeback year. He, he was running scared in the beginning of the season, but... Getting off topic, because I can talk about sports all day long. <laughs> That's kind of the point, but... <laughs> okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah, shoot okay. it. Okay, next one is college football. Um, I assume it's pronounced Stallions. It might be Stallion. Uh, did not obtain signals through in-person scouting. This would be the the whole Michigan scandal. With Harbaugh, that Harbaugh had to say, oh, I had no idea they were even doing that, or... Did not obtain the signals. Signals, through in per... Yeah, I guess you were you were saying about how... I don't we're... understand, like, I just don't understand. It, it's football, dude. It's the same thing with baseball. If you're going to sit there and you're going to have signals... Sorry, I'm a, I'm a person in particular that can pick up on detail, very fine detail. So if you're going to make hand signals, and check. I just happen to pick up on it, sorry... I, I just don't understand, you know, it, it's a game. That's what it's meant to be. It's it's supposed to be offense versus defense. Keep it that. Just keep it. I don't have a big opinion on that because I'm not – I'm a college guy, but I'm also not a college guy. Right. I like my weekends to be for me. So a Saturday, I don't really watch college. I keep up with it, but I don't really watch it. Right. You keep so. tabs on who's winning, you know. Like the Penn State – Penn State West Virginia game. That's going to be a banger. Yeah, that's always that a, banger. Going to be a banger. But and actually, my buddy's going to that, so I hope they have fun. I'm sure you. I'm sure they. And will. he's going to be on the podcast sometime if I ever can get him away from his kids. That sounds horrible, <laughs> but that's true. If he can find just like 15, 20 oh, minutes yeah. out of his day, we're gonna we're gonna do it. So. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next one we're. Kind of going back to NFL, and the only reason I picked this one is because I recognize the name. Uh, Kadarius Toney and uh, Caleb Farley, first-rounders from 2021, let go on NFL uh, roster cut-down day. I was a little surprised, because I know you've talked about Kadarius Toney. I don't remember what you Because you got to catch the fucking ball. I say, I don't remember what you said about him, but I know I've heard that name come out of your mouth. So he, he got to catch the ball, dude. You can't, I mean, yes, you can be a great, unless you're Devin Hester. Devin Hester was the number one special teams guy to ever play the game, in my personal opinion, and probably a lot of people's opinion. Katerius Doney did a great punt return, I think it was. I don't know if it was a kick return, punt return. doesn't matter. He did one great play, and that was it. You got to catch the ball. You can return a punt, you can return a kick. But if you're if you're doing a Devin Hester and you're returning more than one a game or one a game, okay. Now we can keep you, but we're going to keep you on special teams. Devin Hester was that guy. You wanted the ball on your 30-yard line, he's going to get it there. I mean, so to let go, Kadarius Toney, which I know they picked up Juju Smith again. Um, Juju Smith... His his career with Kansas City was good, in my opinion. It was really good in the Super Bowl. So for them to let go of Tony and pick up Juju Smith, I applaud that. Uh, who was the other guy you said they cut? Uh, Caleb Farley. That name sounds familiar. Which- so the only problem I have with doing sports podcasts like this, uh, everybody, is... There's so many names out there, and I don't have stuff in front of me, so I don't know. Uh, You'll have to tell me who he actually was. Hold on. I'm looking I, right I'm not now. good with names. I can tell you numbers, uh, but he doesn't sound that.
What was his name? Caleb Farley. Just look up his name. Caleb Farley. He was a cornerback. Oh, but, uh, okay. The Titans drafted Farley out of Virginia Tech after he was the first player from a major college to opt out of the 2020 season because of the pandemic. Uh, Farley was drafted weeks after a second surgery to repair, to repair a back injury from college. Farley started just twice. His injuries limited, limited him to 12 games over his first two seasons. So I have a feeling, unfortunately, that's probably why they let him go. Yeah, he was a Titans. He played for the Titans. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm not, I'm not familiar oh, with the Titans that much. It says the 25 year old never played last season, which I'm sure that has something to do with it. The Titans kept him on the physically unable to perform list after his father was killed last August in an explosion that destroyed Farley's home in North Carolina. Holy smokes! Yes, yeah, see, I didn't know about all yeah, that crazy shit. I didn't shit. know. Okay. That's kind of wild. Yeah, that is kind of wild. I had no idea about. Of course, I don't recognize. So him. that's probably why I didn't hear about him last year. Though. Yeah, that's exactly why. Because he he never played. <laughs> okay. But he played for the Titans. Yes, he played for the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> Which they were they tanked last year anyway. Yeah, it's probably because he didn't play. <laughs> Um, okay, now we're going to go into legitimate football. I figure this was vague enough to talk about. Uh, you're from Uruguay. Uruguayan soccer player, Juan, and I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of that last name, so I'm not going to even try, dies days after collapsing during a game. The way he was, like, it they says, played the game and then he just collapsed, like, it, days later? Yeah, it says uh, he was playing a game in Brazil, collapsed, and then died five days later. It Holy smokes. From what? Heart attack? Cardio respiratory arrest. He had a cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest. He had a cardiac arrhythmia. I guess he already was sort of not sick. I don't want to say sick because you're not sick if you've got an arrhythmia. He already had a heart issue. And I guess the stress and the strain and probably the heat, I'd imagine. That's insane. Yeah. One minute you're playing yep. soccer and then... Wow, okay. It, I, it just says... I, I'm kind of skimming the article here. It doesn't say, like, if if heat was an issue. Well, I'm sure it is, because, I mean, your heart's got to pump well, the yeah, blood. So yeah. the, I mean, the harder you're working, the more blood you're pumping. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay, no, that's talking about another guy. They're saying that uh, two decades ago... Uh, a guy was in a Brazilian uh, league match. He actually he actually died on the pitch. Maybe the, maybe the field's cursed. And it says that uh, his death forced uh, Brazilian soccer executives to change health protocols to allow defib units in every stadium. Huh. Don't you hate that it kinda takes like, it takes a yeah, tragedy kinda, to kinda burn. like. Hamlin's, uh... Yeah, like, why did it take a tragedy for these places to have defib units or or some sort of... I don't think it's going to happen. I mean... I, I know. It's just kind of ridiculous. Okay. Um, And then these were your two ones that you suggested you wanted to talk about. Uh, Dalvin Cook signed to Dallas. Yeah, that was, like, today. Oh. So we had we had Dalvin Cook. Um, he signed to Dallas today. I'm not sure how much money he actually signed for, but I just I didn't really fully read the article. You guys got to remember this is called the Overtime Podcast for a reason. We're working <laughs> double time here. Um, so I was actually at work when I seen it, so I wasn't able to read the article. And I got home, got busy, so it doesn't matter. All I know is Dalvin Cook getting signed is kind of dangerous for the Cowboys because they have a good running back now. Now they got another good running back. CD Lamb getting signed, as we talked earlier. 
I mean, you got some weapons right now. They can do some damage. And then, because uh, I know I know that Dalvin Cook is a four-time Pro Bowler. I can tell you that right offhand. Um, so he's good if he can stay on the field. He's another one that gets injured. But his injuries isn't like a major, I don't want to say it's a major setback. I think he's he's just out for a few weeks and comes back. Because I don't remember where he came from. Where did he go last year? He signed to a team last year. I think it was the Ravens. I was, I was getting, I would worry because Dalvin Cook's good. Yeah, he's good. What was the other one? Uh, Russell Wilson, starting quarterback. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to call this right now. Uh, we're going to do season predictions later. Um, if Russell Wilson is starting for the Steelers, you've heard it here first. If he starts all season for the Steelers, they will have a losing record for the first time under Mike Tomlin. Good. <laughs> just saying. Uh, just, just, um, just to preface uh, to all the listeners, um, we live in the heart of Steelers country. We are just south of Pittsburgh, and uh, we cannot stand the Steelers. Personally, I don't think we have an issue with the team itself. We don't like the fans. <laughs> Yeah, they will not. They will have a losing season if he starts all year. I like Justin Fields, and you heard it here first, folks. Again, I think Justin Fields did not get a fair opportunity. That's why I don't like Caleb Williams on the Bears. I will say that Justin Fields is better than Caleb Williams. Again, it takes a coach. Yeah, and I don't care who yeah. you are. It takes a coach. Caleb Williams is good. Now I understand. He's also got a whole bunch of weapons that they signed because of that. Why didn't you give Justin Fields that opportunity? I don't understand. I think Justin Fields, just his career, I hope, is not a bust because of this. So I hope he makes a huge comeback. And, I mean, I don't want to say I'd like to see him win a Super Bowl before Caleb Williams because, you know, I'm obviously a 49er fan, so I don't know where Justin Fields is going to go. But I do hope he gets a ring before Kayla Williams and shoves it so far up the Bears' ass. That That's fair. Just say, like, it's bullshit. Um, there was a news article that I don't think I told you about. Did you have a... Oh, I guess that's on the injury list. We have that on the injury list. I've got... I mean, i got a few on the injury list. If I don't say mm. it... Okay. Then you can bring it up. Um, which, huh, that was a nice segue into the Which injury. I do want to... I do want to. Is there a segment where we just talk, or? Yeah, I was. Gonna, so th- again, yeah. this is all new to us. So, uh, okay, what is there another news article you got? No, nope, that was that it. it. No, that was it. Okay, so the twenty twenty four kickoff is on the way, September fifth. I think it's twenty twenty four season. Uh, I can't keep up with the seasons. Hold on. Um, oh, I had the. Uh. Yeah, yes, they start this yeah. year. <laughs> Come on, Uh-oh. Alex, keep up with the time. They start this year. It ends next year. 2025 season will be next year. No, sh- Sherlock. Ugh. Well, you were the one looking it up after... <laughs> anyway, gotta joke around a little bit. I do not like the new kickoff. I watched it in preseason. I do not like it. The, so the new kickoff rules is like... Um, go ahead and look this up for me so I can help, uh, refresh my memory. So they kick off, uh, from the normal, from the normal, uh, 30 yard line or whatever. And they got a drop zone. The kicker's got to kick it in. I think, I don't think he can kick it in the end zone. Kick off I think rules. he's able to. Yeah. Um, and the two, there there's a line. You got the offensive line, defensive line. They line up. They cannot move until the ball is touched from the kicker or, or the kick returner. As soon as he catches, it's game on. But I just I just don't like it. And then onside kick, I think, is the most bullshit of all. Is because you got to announce that you're doing an onside kick and you can only do it in the fourth quarter if you are down. Yeah. So it's I- like, okay, if I'm down in the third quarter by 30 points... Why can't I do an onside kick in the third quarter? I just I think it's bullshit. 
I just think I, I think the onside is more bullshit than the regular kickoff. I understand they want to keep, you know, healthy players and stuff like that. But dude, let the fuckers hit each other. That's what football was made for. Like I don't want to see someone get killed. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want to see motherfucking pads crack. I want to be able to hear right. that on national television. Right. So that's the kickoff. I'm not a big fan of it. Alex, I don't think she really got to see it yet, so she'll have an opinion come September 5th. <laughs> so. All right, well, speaking of people dying, uh, let's look at the injury list. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hope no one died on the injury list. <laughs> okay, first one I have on here, the only reason I have it on there is because it's 49ers. Uh, San Francisco 49ers put Elijah Mitchell on injury reserve out for season. I think yeah, I think um, I, I'm okay with that. Okay, um, I Mitchell, saying... Mitchell's good, but he's always hurt. And I think... Mm, okay. Hold on, let me look. Yeah. Uh, I was just looking up that they did place him on IR. So he's, once you get placed on IR, you're pretty well done. I think, like, towards closer to the end of the season, you can take him off. But okay, Mitchell's always hurt. So just let him sit out a year. Okay. I don't think he's going to come back. Honestly, I think once he's, once this year's over, it's... I say 49ers are probably going to release him. Okay. But he's been with the team for so long. They probably just said, all right, you know what? We're just He's, you know, he's, he's still under contract, I'm sure. Right. We're just going to keep him. And IR does not affect your 53-man roster, so I, I understand okay. placing him on IR. Yeah. But we have two really good rookie running backs. Uh, Mason did absolutely phenomenal, I think. I think Jordan Mason's his name. He did phenomenal during the preseason. Um, obviously, we got Christian McCaffrey, so hopefully he stays healthy. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who um, else do we have? I've got uh, Chubb is on the reserve pup list to start the regular season, rolling him out for the first four games. Yeah, so Chubb, he's good. Um, I think his was a knee injury. It was. It says knee, yeah. Um, he'll he'll come back. He'll be a beast. They just want that dude. To he's like he's up. a big. He's a big. He yeah. He's just a big dude. He's hard to he's hard to tackle. So okay. That didn't surprise me that he's hurt still. So Right, right. He got hurt towards the end of the last year. Yeah, some of these injuries. Kind of... I'm sure some of these injuries take, you know, they take a while to recover from. So I get it. I don't know. I I recovered from my C-section within like a week. So, <laughs> 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 so I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, And then I've got... uh. This comes back to CeeDee Lamb. The Cowboys granted a two-game roster exemption for Lamb. Placed him on the commissioner's exempt list. I don't know what that means. But it was on the injury list, so... That's weird, because it was just a contract thing. I don't know. It was from yesterday, though. Maybe he was mentally unstable. Maybe. <laughs> um... This was from Ooh, last... Other news, you have Ayuk that actually practiced today. That's the first time. Oh, okay. Is that a That's good... That's a good sign. I was going to say, is that a good sign? I imagine so. Um, it's this... not an injury, but... Right. Uh, this one's from last week. Dolphins head coach uh, Tyreek Hill will be out of team drills Wednesday to avoid risk of further injury on his hand. I don't know what happened to his hand. I, I, yeah. I didn't hear nothing. I don't know. It was from last week. It says uh, August 21st. But I was like, Tyreek Hill? I said, when did that happen? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know his hand was injured. I, I didn't. I, I, I don't know. Like, that's just what it says. Um, huh, okay. And then this was another one that I recognized the name. Uh, Greenlaw, placed on the reserve pup list. Yeah, he still we didn't we didn't figure he was gonna come back week one. Okay. Um, because he's the one in the Super Bowl that ran out there and tore his Achilles. Yeah, that, so that's what it's for. Yeah. I mean, that was at the freaking 
right before halftime in the Super Bowl. So it was like, yeah, that's kind of sucked. Yeah. Remember, he was, he was getting ready to run out on the field, and the play wasn't over, so he yeah, stepped back. Yeah, I do remember that. But um, I hope he comes back full, healthy, and ready to go, because we're going to need him this year. That guy is an absolute freaking animal. Um, that's, I mean, I didn't go through the whole list. I just skimmed through it. But that's, that's the last one I had on my list. As far yeah, we as have A.J. Dillon out. I was going to put him on Green the Bay. list, but I, I was like. That's I, a big one. I don't know why I didn't put it on the list. I saw it, and I just was like, no. That's a big one for Green Bay, because Dylan is a very, very good running back, in my my personal opinion, because you got to have... You either have one great running back and then one okay running back, or you have two like kind of average uh, running backs. Well, Dylan is a good, above-average running back. I would go so far as saying great, but you also got to give him a break. Right. You run him too much, and he's out of gas, and he can't run. Like, you know, it's, it does happen. It, it, it seriously does happen. So him being out for the season, that's – and I told you this before. If the team stays healthy, I see the Green Bay – I see Green Bay doing good. But now, I don't know. Right, right. That's a tough one to say. Um, I don't know if there's any other injuries that I didn't say that you, I mean, like Dylan, I, I don't know if there's any others that you know of that you want to talk about or. Mm, let me check the list here. See if there's a list. Okay. List. I found, I think I got mine off of ESPN. It's, they literally list every injury if they're out, if they're. This is a reminder. Um, if they're out, if. They're questionable. I didn't do any that were questionable. I just looked at the list of people that were out. Well, we can do a segment where we scroll through the news that happened yesterday today, too. Yeah. Huh. Sounds like Washington's getting a new name on their stadium. Really? Yep. What uh what's their stadium's name? FedEx Field. FedEx, that's right. What's it gonna be? The Redskin Field? No, it's uh Is it, just read it here. Is it Northern, Heinz Field? Northwest Stadium. Northwest Federal Credit Union. That's not a mouthful or anything. Yeah, you seen I yawned on that one. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. I think they should rename it the Redskin Stadium. Yeah, that won't happen. All right, so I didn't see no big news. Let's look at the injury list. Yeah, I, I got, like, I don't know. I think I was almost done going through the list, and I, I, I don't remember why I stopped. I don't know if it was because shift change was about to happen. I do these things while I'm at work, guys. I work overnight, and I sit there and do nothing most nights. So I figure I could organize these podcasts out a little bit. So I started doing that last night. Here we go. Alvin Kamara will be out versus the Falcons. So he's running back for uh, Saints. But I don't know when that was. Let's look. See when. What are you on? I just went to key injuries. Oh. Oh, Jesus. That was fucking. I don't even worry about when that was. Why did it take me that far back? It took me really far back. It took me to January. Goodness, holy! That's kind of what I said. Good gracious! Here we go. I got a new. I got a new. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna just go down and see if I have anyone that's worth mentioning. Apparently, Mark Andrews. Apparently, Tyreek Hill was worth mentioning because you had no idea. 
Mark Andrews is questionable. So it was it was minor. Ooh, Marquise Scantling is questionable. Neck something happened there. That ain't good. Back of their backup Bills backup quarterback Mitchell Mitchell Trubisky's um questionable. It says that Tyreek Hills was a thumb injury. Matt Milana, I forgot about him. That was earlier in the month. He's out for season. Damn. And that's a big one because that's their that. So last year the Bills had a very good defense, and then he got hurt. And then once he got hurt, it was it would just went downhill from there because Matt Milano is a beast of a linebacker. So that does suck that he got injured. Big time. That's a big time injury. Yeah, and I just read that Odell Beckham, or not Odell Beckham, good good gracious. No, yeah, Odell Beckham. Keen Allen for the Bears is questionable. Yeah, see, I didn't look at the questionables. I just looked at, and I know that that still could make an impact on how you Oh, it definitely predict, will. Sam Hubbard you... for the Bengals is questionable. Knee injury. Huh. That Let's injury see. list that I looked at was long. I said, oh my god, are there even any other players in the NFL? Uh, let's see. We're just looking for big names here. Sam Laporta is questionable. What was he having? Hamstring. Jamar Gibbs is questionable. Hamstring. Jesus Christ. Y'all got to work on your hamstrings. Don't skip leg day. Okay, AJ Dillon we talked about. Texans is looking all right with their... That's good. I mean, there's a couple. Maybe I should look at the injury report by team. Maybe that would help I am. me. Well, I think that would help me out. Christian Kirk for the Jaguars is questionable. He had a calf injury. Ooh. <laughs> Clyde Edwards for Kansas City. So uh, he only had an illness, though. That's that's all right. The reason we look at the questionable ones though, is because those are those would be like it could happen again. That yeah, Chris that makes Jones, sense. Shoulder. Once, like I said, once it gets injured, you don't have time to heal. Heal, it's not good. Devontae Adams tweaks something. He's questionable. Joey Boza is questionable, and so is Justin Herbert. Oh, um, I know that which, name. <laughs> but in case we ever get my buddy on, that's his team, the Chargers. So he'll have a lot of insight on them. Puka Kanua, he's questionable. Jalen Waddle's questionable. He's on the Dolphins. Who the hell's going to play all these games with all these injuries? Well, that's that's big that Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill is injured. I don't know how Tyreek Hill is afford, affording all his child support if he's not playing. Oh, that's another. I knew there was another one I was missing. So, uh, rookie... Quarterback JJ McCarthy is out for the season. Oh my god! Already, dude. That's bad. Uh, yeah, because they got rid of Kirk Cousins because they were going to draft. Well, that bit him in the ass. Good job. <laughs> Good job. So talk about that's some nice. Karma. That is. Pretty big, yes. <sighs> I'm probably so, missing some. So where did Kirk Cousins go? He went to uh, Atlanta. Oh, okay. Big, huge contract. Okay. Where did Belichick go? Bill he's Bel not... He's retired. Oh, okay. Because I know he was interviewing with some teams, and for some reason I thought a team signed... Nobody like... wanted him. No, nobody oh. wanted him. 
That's bad. I mean, uh, Hufunga, it is. He is good to go. He's practicing. I'm pretty sure he's going to be good for week one, but um, I believe... I believe I would let him rest the game. Hufunga would be the safety for 49ers. Okay, I figured uh, he was a 49ers. Trent Williams contract. Listen, Trent, you played your year. You wanted your contract. We didn't know if it was going to be your last season or not, and then you decide literally in the playoffs that you were going to come back next season. Dude... Just get your fucking contract over with or fucking retire. Okay? Like, I'm sorry. This here whole contract, I like the 49ers, but you are the most dramatic team in the league. Well, it makes sense that you would like them then because you're the most dramatic man I know. So, <laughs> No. <laughs> Leonard Floyd, he's injured as well. He's questionable. This guy hasn't been injured. In like ten years, and all of a sudden, Juan Jennings, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I already knew they're all questionable. Of course, we gotta talk about them, but I mean, everybody knows Christian McCaffrey carries half the team on his back. So him being questionable is no half of them. I would <laughs> argue that you're underestimating that. He's not dramatic. I can confirm. <laughs> Tyler Lockett is questionable. That's a big one. Mm, let's see. We're getting down to the... Wow, Titans have a lot, dude. Do they? Hopkins, yeah, Hopkins is uh, questionable. That's a... Marquise Mariota is questionable for Washington. Well, I'm glad you That's know it. all these names because I didn't know. He's that. quarterback. He kind of sucks. I didn't recognize half those names. Did you talk about all the injuries you wanted to talk about? Yep, that's all I needed. Cool. Just the big one. I missed. Okay. I was thinking of JJ McCarthy, and I totally. <laughs> okay. So I knew there was a big one in there. So normally, after we talk about the injury list, um, I would let Chris kind of do predictions for the upcoming. Uh, regular season game week um we're not going to do that this week we're going to save that for next week because it starts next week um however i do want chris to sort of predict his uh i guess is it conference winners division division winners and then what teams he thinks going to the super bowl and who he thinks going to win the super bowl Jesus, that's a lot. Well, you can do it real quick. You don't have to explain. Well, you almost have to explain. So, are you gonna are you gonna go by division for me, or am I just gonna go? Uh, you lead that because I have no idea. Okay, well, I'll just look at a list right here. Just to make it easy. We'll go from AFC to NFC, I guess. So, AFC East, we have Buffalo, Miami, New England, and the Jets. So, you want me to get? Guess yeah, tell correctly me. who's going to win that division. Yes, and I'm going to write it down. So, which, which, uh, I mean, I, wait, should I put the, should I get on my DraftKings and get, because I already bet on this. I actually put a bet down. So, oh man, so which, I actually put two bets which, for this division. Which division is this? AFC East. AFC East. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I might get a lot of hate for this, but I'm going to go with the Jets winning this division. Okay. Now, I got to explain why, though, because it's not fair for me to pick a team and then not explain why. That's up. The reason I have to pick the Jets is these predictions are made to be if everything and everyone stays healthy. So... If the Jets stay healthy, I could see them skimming by. Last year, they didn't have Aaron Rodgers, and they still almost made the playoffs. So that's saying that they did good without Aaron Rodgers. They did decent. I want to say good. They did decent. 
Better so, than we thought they were going to. Yes, and with Buffalo losing Stefan Diggs, or however you want to pronounce his name, Stefan Diggs. When did they lose uh, him? I didn't know what they... What do you mean? Uh, they got what? rid of him. Well, he didn't sign with... Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, for them to lose their star wide receiver, they still have good wide receivers, but... Again, you got to have two good wide receivers on the team. Like, standout wide receivers. That way, one's double teamed, the other one can get the ball. So, Gabe Davis is going to have either a really good career or a really good year, or it's going to be a big bust because he can't get open. Um, so, with them losing that and Matt Milano, I don't see them winning the division. Of course, I hope they do because I am a Josh Allen fan. Um, with Miami... They had a couple injuries last year that slowed them down, so I can just see the Jets squeaking by, winning that division. So okay, that's that's my prediction for the AFC East. Okay, go on with your next one. Okay, AFC North. Uh, you have Baltimore, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. <sighs> It's a toss-up between Baltimore and Cincinnati. I figured I think, that's who you were going to pick. <laughs> I think, again, if everyone stays healthy, I believe Baltimore's going to pull it out. Their their defense is just immaculate. I mean, okay. it's one of the best defenses. It was number one in everything last year. It's the first time the defense been number one in any cat, all the categories. And yeah, football's the, been around for a while. The Ravens did do really well last year. I agree. Um, AFC South, this is actually a very easy pick for me. Um, I like my Jacksonville Jaguars with tr- Trevor Lawrence, but I don't think they're going to do it. It's going to be Houston all the way because Houston, I'm going to okay. go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just put my money where my mouth is. Houston's winning the Super Bowl, so there's your pick for the Super Bowl. If and this is the case, everybody stays healthy. Okay, if everyone stays healthy. Houston's going to go to the Super Bowl. I don't know if they're going to win it, but they're definitely going to make it. All right, well. They got a good head coach. Their head coach was a defensive phenom in 49ers um, in San Francisco. So now it's, he's got a head coach. He's got Al Shair coming back as a linebacker. That guy was a – when I'm talking 49er defense when they were good – they had Al Shair. He's going back to the Texans. They're winning the Super Bowl. They're winning the division. They're winning the conference. Plain and simple. Okay. And you got a hell of a you got a hell of an offense. Okay. Um, AFC West. You have Denver, Kansas City, Raiders, and Chargers. Um, again, it's a hard one because I, yeah. I, it's hard to it's hard to bet against a hard ball. Well, there's only two yeah. in that division. I was gonna say it's I... hard to bet, but they don't have what he needs yet. I don't think right. they got Justin Herbert. He's a good quarterback, but he also needs more weapons. They need a better defense. Defense wins championships. I'm going to have to go with Kansas City winning I mean, that yeah. division. I was gonna say, but I would not be surprised if Chargers did pull, come out, pull something out of their their asses. <laughs> yeah. Now and then we go to NFC East. We got Dallas Giants, Philadelphia, and Washington. I think it's going to be a toss-up between Philadelphia and Dallas like it was last year. But with Philadelphia winning the division. Okay. Okay. I feel like Philadelphia is definitely going to win this this year again. Okay. Um, Here's another hard one for me. Chicago, Detroit, Green Bay, Minnesota. Minnesota is going to be last. Um, They're getting... Injuries left and right. They're which, done, I think. Which division is this? They're done. Uh, NFC North. North. Sorry. Okay. Dallas was NFC East. Okay. Um, NFC North. I feel like it's either going to be Green Bay and Lions. So I'm going to put Ooh. with AJ Dillon being out now. This is why my predictions changed since last Thursday. I'm going to have to go with the Lions. Well, the, li- the Lions, I, I feel like maybe they're going to ride off the high of how far they got last year. 
and I fall short. I don't know if that's, that's a what thing. I'm saying. With the, the young, it is with the young okay. team though, like Green Bay. They didn't click in the beginning of the season last year, but they started clicking towards the end where it mattered. They made it as far as they did with the youngest team, and then you just ride from there to to off season. You get your timing back. They can have a breakout season. Um, Chicago also could have a breakout season with all the people they signed. That's the team that got rid of Justin Fields. Okay. They signed Caleb Williams. The Bears, the Chicago Bears. So I could see them doing really good because they they just paid for this entire ta- roster, really. I mean, right. they, they pretty well just did a clean slate. So I don't know. I, that's a good one. But I, I just feel like Detroit's going to pull it out. Okay. I won't. I we got go. NFC South. You got Atlanta, Carolina, Saints, Ooh. and Tampa Bay. See, I um, I Atlanta's was, winning it. You said Atlanta? Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. Okay. See, I was going to say the Saints, but that's coming from the idiot that knows nothing about football. So. Well, they just signed Kirk Cousins. He's a really good uh, quarterback. I if he stays about that. healthy, <laughs> they also got a couple good wide receivers under their belt. They still got. B. John Robinson, which is an absolute beast when he carries the ball. He's also a beast when he catches the ball. So, Drake London catching the ball. You got a good wide receiver. It's kind of like you take 49ers offense and you just put them on NFC South. Okay, okay. You got a good quarterback. You got two good wide receivers. I think their tight end's okay. Now you got another fucking two good running backs. Like, you're pretty well set. Okay. Um, last but definitely not I, least, I wonder yeah. <laughs> NFC West. I could see the Rams actually taking the division this year because if everyone again stays healthy, but I, you, I got to go with my team. Yep. I don't you can't go against your team. That's just it's always been a rule for me. I wouldn't bet on my team, but I, I kind of did. Right. Yeah. For the division, but you know. I got to go. I got to go with San Francisco winning the division. Hopefully the Super Bowl. Okay. And then is it conference next? Is that what they do or? Yeah, but that's, that's too, that's way too. F- I mean, you're just predicting. No, that's fine. I, um, I figure you just do the division, which is division is what I was thinking of. And then, uh, just Super Bowl prediction. Houston and Green Bay. And Green Bay? Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Lions. I wouldn't mind if it, if Houston goes and 49ers don't actually make it. I'll be okay with the Lions because those two teams never seen the Super Bowl. Well, and I know last year. I mean, one of them's going to win it. I know last year that was the whole thing. You were like, because it was the Lions versus the 49ers, wasn't it? And you were like, I wouldn't be upset if the Lions went, but... <laughs> yeah, that was last year. Okay, I thought that was last year. All right, well. Now, next week when we do this game, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little different than that, but I figured... Hopefully it's a lot shorter, too. It will be. It's going to be a flash game. We had a lot to, We had a lot to talk about for our first day, which is okay, because that's... Okay, well... We gotta catch up, so... Alright, well, next is gonna be the fun thing that I actually know something about. Um, This is gonna be our WWE segment uh, called uh, Before the Bell Rings. I don't know why I was trying to say beyond. I was like, what? what's the word? Beyond the bell. Hey, beyond, hey, beyond the bell does sound good, but... um. English. That is actually pretty good. We could always change it. You know, this is yeah. our first episode. Yeah, we'll we'll think on that. English is hard though. Um, so this is when we normally bring in uh who we who we claim is the expert on this because he knows his stuff. Um, I know a little bit. I know Chris knows a little bit. But if it's anything past like ten years ago, I'm kind of like uh. I could tell you things that happened 10 years ago. I went to a few events. So, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Monday Night Raw that just passed. We're just going to kind of skim. We're going to look at the match card for SmackDown, the upcoming SmackDown. 
sort of talk about that a little bit. And then if there's a pay-per-view like there is this week, we will talk about the pay-per-view. We'll look at the match card for that as well. Um, if not, that just means we have a little more time to talk about Raw and SmackDown. Um, so let's, I guess we'll start with Raw, this past Raw. We, we watched it. Um, it's a little hard for me to watch them sometimes because of how, well, not Monday Night Raw, but SmackDown, just because of how my schedule is. Um, so I've got the match card up. Uh, Judgment Day kicks off the show, battles LWO and eight-man tag team match. I know your woman's in Judgment Day right now, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything worth talking about. There she there. is. There she is right there. Right there. Oh, my God. I don't know if there's anything there that you... Wait, wait, is this, is this... I'm confused. Are we talking about this past Raw? We're talking about, yes, we're talking about this past Monday night, yeah. Yeah, they were just doing a tag team match. Yeah. I mean, nothing, I... nothing crazy besides, you know, your normal Rhea Ripley and... Right. The Terror Twins coming out and doing their thing. And then, okay, next one... Terrorizing the Judgment Day that they got kicked out of. And then oh, here's a, here's funny. here's another match that I am like, can we please do something different? Damage Control versus Pure Fusion Collective. Can we please? Yeah, get it's like tag it's just team? continuing. It's just continuing and continuing. It's, every it's starting week. to get competitive. <laughs> and I never thought that I'd say that I'm rooting for Damage Control, but here I am, I guess. Do you mean the people that walk out drunk? Yes. Yes. Their entrance is so weird to me. They just come out and I, I know, and I, I don't know if there's an artistic um reason for it. I I don't know. They come out, they look like they're drunk, dude. I know. Which I I don't have a problem with it. I think, you know, whatever. It's just funny. It it, it is hilarious. It's just I funny. I will say it is hilarious, like, but they just like they come out <laughs> drunk, dude. Okay, and then the next one, or the thing that happened next on Raw, we can talk a little bit more about when we talk about Bash at Berlin, but the Drew McIntyre promo, um, I have my own opinions on this that we can talk about uh, when we talk about the Bash at Berlin uh, match card. But I don't know if you have an opinion. It's getting a little repetitive in my opinion. That's all but it's a good. It's kind of a good repetitive because yes. they still keep it interesting. Yes. I've never seen a, a strap match. Let's see what's what's gonna happen at Bash of Berlin. That's, Let's just. Yes. Talk, I mean, I'm just gonna get that out of the way because <laughs> if we're talking about WWE, we're talking about repetitive situations. This That's is a repetitive different. match. It's getting old. But they're they're finding. But it's Drew McIntyre and their promos are great. Yes, I agree. I, I definitely agree. And a strap match, uh, yeah, we're seeing repetitive. You know, Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. But a strap match is different. So they're at least uh, yeah. keeping it fresh a little bit. At least interesting enough that I'm like, oh, I gotta watch that. So, like I said, I'll have more to say about that when we talk about the actual Bash at Berlin match. Um. Next one was the Uso Kingston Carrion Cross match. Um, Uso, I just want to yeah. say I, I like Kofi Kingston. He's one of my all-time favorites. But I am so fucking glad that Uso won. I am so happy. So okay, Corey Graves over there. <laughs> I'm doing the geek, man. <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, you have I'm a to... I'm a huge Uso fan, so he needs to win the fucking. Uh, he either needs to get to the title match or win the title. Because I also really like. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, Braun Breaker. I do like him. I know he's a heel, but he's so good. Like I don't think he's hard to call a heel though. He is, How he is, is he? I mean, it's just he just wanted his opportunity. He got his opportunity. I agree. He, so is he really the 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 he, heel here, or is he the fucking like? Well, I, look how good I am. Right, right. I I can I see your logic. I agree with it. Um, next thing that happened was the Randy Orton promo. Enough to make a grown man cry. May I just say, Randy needs to win it all. I I, I agree. Which we the can talk. That, we can talk about yeah, that. <laughs> we'll talk about that during bash. But uh, that promo was so good, and like, uh... and um, just a heads up, 
for the sports podcast. Um, I'm just going to add something real quick that I just now thought of. Um, in case this kicks off a little more, maybe I can go live during a PPV event. You won't be able to hear the audio or watch the show with me, but you can see my live reaction while I'm that watching That would it. be fun. That would be a lot of fun, I think. I agree. I think that would be something definitely worth trying to do. Yeah. Again, you won't be able to, the audience won't be able to hear anything or... Yeah, but I could, you know. I, I could, I could mark off what you're reacting to, and we, I can put t a subtitle. Yeah, we can talk says, about who's like, whose match it is, and what's yeah, kind of going yeah, on. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, um, I think that would be something fun. So if you guys are interested, definitely let us know. Yeah, and I, we can probably get Ethan to do that one with us. Yeah, I think we we could probably rope him into that for sure. Um. Next match was uh, one big SOB versus Bronson Reed. Braun Strowman should have destroyed him. Oh my god, I know. I I, I wish. I kind of hope he kind of hope he does here in the next Raw because he can't be out. That that's one big son of a bitch, bro. Exactly. They put him through a car though. So if you guys don't watch WWE and you want to <laughs> say it's fake. You know what? You're one hundred percent right. It's fake, but some of those hits are real, and you got to be a fucking athletic motherfucker yes. to be able to do half of what they can do. I'm sorry. They're talented. But nobody likes Logan Paul, and I have to say this before any anything further gets said. When he told uh, Impulsive on Impulsive, he said, um, boxing is easier than WWE. I 100% respected him for his answer he said when he's boxing it's one verse one that's always worried about but when he's in that ring mm -hmm. in wwe he's got six hundred thousand people watching yep. him and that's what he cares about i said you know what you just won my respect from he's that and with that being said we forgot to do something on my twitch we need to pin my wwe upload every wednesday Okay. You need to pin it because it is sports. I did add him to my fucking YouTube video, so go watch out. I'm making my own season for WWE. Logan Paul is in there, so go check it out. I will say, just as a, a, a like a sidetrack uh, conversation, I don't like Logan Paul, but I think he's good at what he does. Whoa. I <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, I get distracted very I, easy. Like, I, I, I think, didn't know. I think he knows how to work an audience. Kind of like Dominic Mysterio. I don't really like Dominic Mysterio, but he knows how to work an audience, and I can respect Liv, that. Liv likes him, and I like Liv, so I like Dom now. Yeah, okay. Big Daddy Dom. <laughs> he's one lucky son of a bitch. He ain't a big son of a bitch, but he's one lucky motherfucker. Jesus. Lock and lift with Liv Morgan? Are you kidding me? Yes, YouTube and Twitch and Spotify. <laughs> this is my wife right here. This is my wife. But she allows me to simp over Liv Morgan. I allow her to simp oh. over Benedict Cumberbatch, so we're even. Yes, I think that's even. So at the <laughs> I'm laughing because at the end of, of the match card here it says top moments and takeaways. I cannot listen to this. Strowman choke slammed a staff member through a snack table backstage. What a waste of perfectly good Fritos. Jesus Lord Almighty. If I'm that if I'm that staff member, I'm probably eating some of the food that yeah! we went just, through, dude. Just let me down here. Just chilling. Okay, and then next match uh was uh the Miz, uh Xavier Woods and Pete Dunn. Part of me's glad that Pete Dunn won because now I have someone to root against. I'm glad it yeah, wasn't I don't Xavier like Woods. Pete Dunn at all. But I, I really wish the Miz would have won. I, I've always liked the Miz, Miz. They're doing Miz so dirty, but I, they I are. get it. Maybe he's ready for a break. Well, I, mean, I, I, I have heard a rumor they're setting him up to retire. He wants to retire, so they're sort of setting him up for that. I don't know if that's true. Oh, uh, that means our truth. That's why they got rid of the tag team titles, and our truth had to be a part of that. But. I guess that's also a good thing because our truth was in part of Miz's tag team, so that'll go down in history. Yes, and that was, that was such being... a good tag team. My favorite tag team of all time, though, that was sort of like a silly, goofy tag team, was uh, Team Hell No, though. That was my all-time favorite. I don't know that one. That's, so. That was Daniel Bryan and Kane. It just 
it was just so goofy that it worked. So, and that's sort of like the the Miz and our truth. They were such a goofy, a goofy tag team, but it worked. So, um, let's see. Uh, and then the last match of the night there was uh, Uncle Howdy and Chad Gable. Uncle Howdy. I. Oh, did you know this? Before the main event of Raw, Bo Dallas' last match in WWE was a tag team contest that included Chad Gable. No, I did not. I did not know that either. That was that was a good match. Maybe that's why they set up Chad Gable for all this. You know, now that I've read that, I... Easter egg... So okay, so that was that was raw. Um, we're gonna sort of talk about SmackDown. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet, so we don't really have to. There's nothing for us to really talk about more so than just like, okay, this. We get to talk about last week's, um, but we'll have to like kind of skim it. I think. Um, they they kind of well, and they haven't announced a whole lot for SmackDown yet. They've only announced two things for this week, so we could. Tribal talk... Chief is coming back. What? Oh, Tribal, Tribal Chief. Chief's coming back. Um, oh, the original. I'm, I'm on the wrong keyboard. Uh. But now with Kevin Owens and that whole tag team, that was a setup for Kevin Owens to smack the hell out of. Cody Rhodes, and he didn't. Towards the end there, he took that title. I was like, oh no, he's going to do it. I know, I I know. But Um, I think Kevin Owens knows better to do that against Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes would fucking whoop him. See, Kevin Owens did it to eight other other times to different people, but they were all weak people. Cody Rhodes ain't weak. That's why I think Kevin Owens did it to the eight other times to other people. But won't do it to Cody because he knows, hey, you know, this is, we're talking about fucking Cody Rhodes here. We're not talking about Sami Zayn. Here we go. Um, If you just want to skim over last week's SmackDown real quick, and then we can talk about the two things that have been announced for SmackDown this week, we can do that real quick. Uh, Just go ahead. Because, I mean, that was the biggest thing was Kevin Owens and then the Bloodline, obviously. But Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not... not seeing a whole lot of things that... um. Well, here, this is something we could talk about real quick. Uh, Fire and Dawn. Do you think, I mean, I do they have a match at Bash at Berlin? I don't remember. I'm actually not sure. I. Alba, Al, Alba Fry or whatever the fuck, however you say her yeah. name, Alba Fry. I actually like them as a tag team. I, I don't mind them. They're another I like their that... accents, but... That one makes her cute. That one accent makes that one that one cute. I think the tall one. I'll be. I think it's Fry actually. The Scottish one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There. There really wasn't anything on SmackDown that's worth talking about. Um, this week, it says announced for WWE SmackDown. The only two things that they have right now is a street fight of Nia Jax versus Mission? That I I I don't know who that is. And obviously I know who? Mission. Oh, let me see her name real quick. It's M I C H I N. Yeah, she's from uh Is she in NXT? Yeah, she came up from NXT. I figured. I, I usually I, I make the assumption. I call I, her Michelin. <laughs> Michelin. Okay, I think I've heard you say. And then the only other thing that was announced was LA Knight's uh, open challenge for the championship. Well, you know what's going to happen. Though. I mean, you know what matches are going to be happening. What? Uh, who do you think's going for it? Who? LA Knights. Yeah, for LA Knights, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. It is. I don't. JD McDonough. Oh, okay. 
I don't know if that's a title that can go back and forth. Or, I don't know. I don't know either, but I, that, that's not a bad prediction. Do you think, I mean, I don't, I don't think Logan Paul's going to come and challenge him, but he might. I mean. Could. He could. I don't see why he wouldn't. Uh, Grace, I think Randy, if you want to do predictions, I think Cody Rhodes win it. Randy Orton's going to win it. Well, now, hold on. I think. We're, we're not talking about that yet. Well, yeah, but you don't know what, you said you don't know what's all going on. I got it right here. What all matches are going to happen. For SmackDown? No, not for SmackDown. What? I, I thought we were doing Bash for Berlin. No, I was still on SmackDown. Oh, they only have two for SmackDown? Yeah, those are the only right two now? that have been announced, yeah. But they yeah, know- had, that Michelin girl's that one from last week. Don't you remember? She was, she's been after Nia Jax for like a couple weeks now. I think so. It looks, I don't know what. How to describe what she looks oh, like. Oh, no, I saw a picture of her, and I said, who the hell is that? Yeah, she's been after her for weeks. Okay, well, did you want to talk about Bash of Berlin so bad? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I thought that's what we were talking about. No, Sorry. I was still talking about... There ain't much to talk about the future SmackDown yet. I, I know, I know, that's why. Um. Okay, so the five matches... That are planned so far, that are confirmed. Uh, we'll talk about Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens. Yeah, which is main event. That's uh, I'm I'm nervous about that. I'd say match. that's main event, right? I wonder. I would say, yeah. unless it's uh, Gunther versus Randy Orton, that's going to be the main event. Which that would be a good main event. Honestly, I think that one should be main. Event, I agree. Really, I agree. I'm real nervous about this Cody Rhodes Kevin Owens match. I like both of them. I say the bloodline's getting involved. I, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised at all if the bloodline, bloodline don't like them both. Uh, exactly. That's what makes me nervous. I think. Um, and then you got Gunther versus Randy Orton. I think before you say anything, I think Randy Orton's gonna win. Prior to Monday Night Raw, I would have said Gunther, but when he came out and did that promo, what did it for me was you guys talking about, oh, Randy's the legend killer. What word did he use to describe Gunther? Oh, he's a legend in the European uh, circuit. That's all I needed to hear. Randy's winning. Randy's winning because of he just came off back surgery and shit, and they got to give him the new title before he I, actually I think, hangs it up. I think he breaks a record if he wins. I, he's winning. I think. I think he's winning. Like I said, prior to my He's Monday winning night, with an RKO off the top rope. Oh, I like that. Okay. Gunther's going to try some, some fuck shit on him, and he's going to jump up there and RKO the fuck out of him. And it's going to come out of nowhere. Every time I look over at, your, at my screen, you're lower and lower and lower and lower. <laughs> um... I think I just think Randy Orton needs to win it because Gunther, eighty percent of his career, he's been holding a fucking title. Like, come on, dude. Well, and he talked about he talked about uh, Gunther needs to be humbled. I agree. I think humbled's the right word. Gunther needs to be humbled. I like Gunther. I do too. I he's, like Gunther a lot. He's a, he's a damn good wrestler. However, and he's a damn good promoer. Yes, he is. He's very good. Um. But yeah, I think Randy's winning. And I usually don't like people on the mic that it's hard to understand, like Becky but Lynch. He's but he's clear. I think he's very he's, clear. He, so, he's got good English. Yes. He, he, yes. He he enunciates very well, so it's it's easy to follow along with him and and understand him and whatever. Um, I can't wait to hear your prediction on this. Liv Morgan and Dominic versus the Terror Twins. Man, Livy Morgan's gonna win that shit. I think I think this is no, going she's losing. I, see, I I think they're going to lose. I agree. I think the Terror Twins, because the Terror Twins are, are they're kind of terrifying. Yeah, but it, it's due for due for them to win anyway. Well, it is. However, I think Dominic, when Dominic does his matches, you know, they make him come across as a little wimp, because he kind of is a little wimp. So he, it's rare that he wins, and I think this is going to be a case of every dog has its day, maybe. 
Or he's going to win because of Liv Morgan, but I don't see them winning. No, I say they're losing because Rhea is a mixed tag team. And Liv might be able to beat up on Damien, but you're not going to see it. You've already seen Rhea trying to riptide Dom over and over. Right. It's never happened. It's just a, it's just a build up. She riptied JD McDonough last week, I think it was, or whatever it was. This, whenever it was. So I feel like, yeah, she's, she's riptying, riptying fucking Dom, and it's over. I, the ref's yeah. gonna get distracted. She's gonna come in there, rip tied him, and and the, yeah, and then they're gonna win. The Terra Twins are gonna win. I agree. Like I said, it's she's tried it multiple times, either with Liv or Dom, and it has both backfired because Dom either saves Liv or Liv saves Dom. So it's bound to happen. I I feel like it's Rhea versus Dom more in yeah. this match than anything. So okay, um. This is another one of those matches that I'm kind of getting sick of of, of watching. Um, the Unholy Union, which it says they're the champion, so I assume that that's Fire and Dawn. Yeah, versus, that's Fire and Dawn. Versus Bel Air and Cargirl. I am like, this is another match that's getting... I feel like in the well, women's... Well, I understand why this one's... Because the first time... So, I understand why it's happening again. When Bel Air lost, when they lost the tag team, it was it was due to the whole triple threat tag team match. That's why all these tag team matches have been happening. Yes, I, I get it. So I for get them it. to come back for their titles, I understand. I think they're going to lose it though. I see. I I agree. I think they are going to lose it as well. Um, but I I mean I the the women's I division the women's division on WWE is always lacking. Like they well, have, yeah, because there's not a lot. I they, don't think there's a lot. There's not. There was a period where the women's division was like on top, like 10 years ago. They were on top or starting to get on top. And it went really well. And now they've just kind of, they're back to the original. Like, it's just lacking. Becky Lynch, Lita, all them. Yeah, those are the ones who made it to the top. Trish yeah, Stratus, like, like the, the Bella Twins. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Trish. I, I don't know. Like, Liv and Rhea? Okay. They're not lacking. I don't think the women... But they're not... I feel like it needs to be Liv and Raquel. Instead of her holding the title, I think it needs to be her holding the tag team title. Okay. Okay. You all know you just need like a judgment... Or not judgment. Like a bloodline, but women's. Like, kind of like what damage control was with... When they were Bailey. all, yes, yes. When they were uh, Dakota Kai, uh, Bailey, that was kind Here's of the Kai. women's bloodline, kind of. Um, and then last but not least, CM Punk versus CM Drew Punk McIntyre. Yeah, CM Punk's finally winning. I think CM Punk is going to win. I agree. Um, I think Drew has insulted CM Punk enough that CM Punk's finally going to win one. Um, oh, he's going to beat the hell out of him, I think. I, I agree. I agree. I think CM Punk's going to come in there and be pretty ruthless. Like, this is one of those matches that I don't... I don't necessarily care who wins. I like both of them. I do like... See, I don't know, because when I first started watching wrestling, they were both... Yeah. Drew McIntyre was just starting, and CM Punk was a pretty well-established wrestler at that point. Um, I I didn't like Drew McIntyre at first. He did grow on me a little bit when he was with, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I don't know if you're going to know him. It was, I already don't know. It was the Indian guy. And, Jeez! And, and Heath, um... Heath Slater? Heath Ledger. No, not Heath Ledger. Heath Slater, I think. <laughs> I... I they were they were like a triple threat tag team, and I could not stand any of them. And then they all started to grow on me a little bit. Um, I like Ma, I like today's Drew McIntyre um, more than I like the Drew McIntyre I started with. Um, CM Punk, I think he's pretty cool. CM Punk was like I said, he was pretty established by the time I started watching, and he was with Paul Heyman when I was watching. 
and nobody could stand him. Nobody could stand him or Paul Heyman. And it's just funny how that how things change. Because now Paul Heyman is such a well-respected man. Like, the, people are, are loving Paul Heyman but hating who he's representing. And it's just wild to me because when I started, that's not how it was. Um, but yeah, I think, I think CM Punk, yeah, I think he's taking this one. I think he's had hundred percent taking it. Think, I'd put money on it. I think he's had enough of the bracelet thing. I I honestly think he's yeah. Had that's why I'm of, saying he's winning it. Yeah, I think he's gonna whoop his ass, take yep, the bracelet, and yep, walk off the stage. Yep, yep I agree. Um, that's exactly what's gonna happen. He'll whoop his ass. However, having said that, if Drew McIntyre were to win, I wouldn't be upset about it because I like Drew McIntyre. So. Uh yeah, and that was it. Which I could that's gonna be crazy. <sighs> How long that matches those matches are gonna last because there's not a lot. Well, they're saying that it, it says here it wouldn't be a shock to see one more SmackDown related match come out of tomorrow or out of Friday, so it's yeah, possible well, we're gonna I get still there's still no I mean that's a I guess that is kind of a big list. One, two, three. That's five four, matches, and there are five. five pretty big matches. So, how long? Yeah, but I can see the tag team titles not taking long. Is what I'm saying. I agree. I because the women's division is lacking. <laughs> so, we got two behemoths in there versus two. I, I agree. I mean, again, I wouldn't be surprised if they won it though. It's Blair just. And- it's just funny to see the the match card and i'm sitting here thinking you know i have my prediction for who's winning but i wouldn't be upset if the other the other people won like the only one i'm going to be upset about is the randy orton one i, I will be upset about he that needs one too. To win it. however <laughs> No, he needs to win. I, it. I agree. I agree. That but that there, would be the best. That's it's just a slap in the face in the locker room that he's held the title for eighty percent of his career. I know that's a pretty title. Insane. A title. That's pretty insane. Like, I agree. Give it to the one guy who helped shape the WWE, which is Randy Orton. I'm sorry, like he shaped the WWE. He helped build it. He should be. I would say he's damn near close to being on Mount Rushmore of WWE, in my opinion. I agree. Um, oh. No. I wanted to look something up before we, we finished off here. Uh, w title record. What's he doing? He's doing the world heavyweight, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So according to this, uh, Ric Flair and John Cena are tied for the number of title reigns at 16. And then Randy Orton and Triple H are tied for 14. 14 title, title reigns. So Randy would surpass Triple H if he wins. Which would be, I, I like Triple H, but I think it would be fantastic for Randy. So, I think Randy deserves it. And I'll be quite frank with you. I know Ric Flair is a legend, but I would really like to see Randy Randy go on to beat that record too. So, I think if anyone's going to be worthy of it, it's going to be It should him. be Randy. I agree. Yeah, it should be Randy. I've always liked him, even when he was a heel. Yeah, he was. He's another one that, even when he's a heel, he's so good that it's like I just I, I nine can't minutes ago I got more news. Oh yeah. So here on a podcast, we're also just gonna do like immediate news as well. If I'm like scrolling if or something, we and happen see to see, yeah. Caitlin Clark breaks a WNBA rookie single season three point record. Congratulations good for her. Now she surpasses Ryan Howard, who knocked down eighty-five threes in twenty twenty-two. Now that's one. Well, that's one sport where the women's division is not lacking. So uh, congratulations! Yeah, good for her. Oh, and we have to mention this because Ty Johnson did make the Buffalo Bills Woo! roster. 
Um, Ty Johnson is from Fort Hill, and that's just down the road from us. So I can literally, I can literally drive you to Fort Hill High School. I know you can see it. When I go to the hospital, that's I, I can see Fort Hill. So we that's uh, congratulations, that Ty Johnson. Fantastic. He did make the fifty-three man roster for the Buffalo Bills. I hope to see more of him on the field, though. Yeah, he's. I mean, but, I hope to see him. I, I mean, I can't say that he's like. As good as the and, running backs that well, they have. But. I know, I know that pretty well every NFL star or NFL player goes and they go back to their communities and you know do things. But it, it is a little different when you see when you see one of them come to your community and they do stuff. So he hosts, and it is great because like I don't know, I just feel like Ty, you don't hear a lot about it. Ty, like Ty Johnson. He does a free football camp every May for for kids. It's free. They he prov- they provide food, drinks, uh, snacks, uh, and these these kids just get to come and play football and they get to learn from Ty Johnson. Like that's really cool that he does that. Like I said, I know they all go out and they do those kind of things, but it is it's different when you see it in your community. So, and you know those kids have a blast. So. Yeah, I, I applaud, definitely applaud Ty Johnson. So, is there anything you else you want to talk about? No, I just happened to see those. Okay. Well, then, uh, next week it'll be it'll look a little different next week. Um, like I said, we're gonna do something different with uh the the games that are gonna be coming up that week. Uh, a little game that shouldn't take too long. We'll talk about Bash at Berlin, see where we went wrong with our predictions and whatnot. Um, we'll talk about SmackDown. We'll talk about I ain't going to be wrong, so. <laughs> well, and you have to remember, people like to come back during pay-per-view, so something big could happen that we just didn't see coming, I guess. Um, but yeah, next week it will look a little different. Hopefully not too different. I'm going to try and keep things. And hopefully a little bit shorter of course this is our first episode we expected it to be a little bit long so maybe I we can, had a lot to talk about maybe i can cut back the news the news article thing to just like two news articles or something well that was okay but like we just needed it's okay i mean we went through that injury list that took up well uh, but next week we don't have to do the whole injury list like I did. No, we I can just look and see what the new injuries are if there are any and if there's not then There there will be. I'm there, sure there, there will, will be. be, yeah. Um but yeah, uh there might be some I might add something in into it that Chris doesn't know about. I'm not 100% sure yet. I have to debate on how I want to do it. But our beyond the bell or Whatever we're gonna call it, the I like Beyond the Bell. I like that. I think we should stick Beyond with the that. Bell will be another segment as well, of course, and hopefully that's around. So we're trying to start this at six. You can almost um, always guarantee we're gonna talk NFL and WWE at least. So we're definitely gonna be talking about NFL and WWE. That's our number one here on this show. Yeah. Um, and once obviously week one football comes out, there's gonna be a lot more to talk about. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's gonna look. This podcast is gonna look different every week until the last or until the first week of NFL games are over, and then it's gonna stay pretty consistent. I think, based on how I want to do it, or at least how I have it in my head. So, I guess we'll we'll find out. <laughs> so, again, we're gonna close this out so it ain't too long. It's about an hour and thirty. 30 minutes so we're going to close it out and i just want to thank everybody who's going to be watching this on youtube uh, again i'm live on twitch six o'clock wednesdays it'll be uploaded on a friday so it's going to be a day late have to get over it sorry <laughs> and for my spotify listeners we're going to try to upload it as fast as we possibly can i don't think i don't know how to go live on spotify i don't know if that's an actual thing uh, we could probably look is. into it I'll yeah look we can into look it. into it so Hope you guys enjoyed it, um, and we'll see you next week.